Hey guys, it's Joe with PocketNow.com. Today I've got the HTC Wildfire S to show you. It's a really, really cool little phone and I think you're gonna like it. Let's go ahead and get this thing unboxed. Okay, so before we get started, a big shout out to T-Mobile for providing us with this review unit to, uh, to test and to show you. It's very, very cool. As such, the the stuff that we're going to tell you is our own, so don't worry about T-Mobile trying to influence us. Other than them providing us with a uh, specification sheet, everything that you're going to see here is purely us. So let's go ahead and get this thing open and take a look at it. First of all, we've got a very nice lift-up box. Nice design here. Very good-looking phone. Over on the side, we've got some branding. We've got some what's inside over here. On the back, some very quick specifications and a whole bunch of frying print like you're used to. And down on the bottom, just T-Mobile branding. On the other side of that box is a sticker with IMEI information. So let's get this open. Now there's the phone. Nice and pretty. Set that aside for a minute and see what else we have in the box. Of course, we've got a nice white colored HTC wall wart with US prongs and a USB port on the other side, just like we've become accustomed to. It does have a matching, in this case, white USB cable with the uh, the nice rounded white edges and corners. I really, really like that. It's just a, an extra level of finesse on it, even a white little rubber band there. Now this is white because the phone is white. The phone is also available through select distributors in black as well. So uh, if uh, white's not your thing, you can do that. I'll show you that in just a minute and uh, I think you'll kind of like it. So inside this little box, we don't have to open a lid or anything there, they just kind of slide out, is our return label. So you can take your old phone, put it in the box, slap the label on it, send it back for recycling or repurposing. This is something that T-Mobile does that I really like. Next, we've got a start guide, formerly known as the quick start guide, which tells you a whole bunch of stuff. One thing that it doesn't tell you, okay, so uh, let's flip through this really quick, yada yada yada. Right here, it tells you about the SIM card. Detach the SIM from the bigger card. Okay, good enough. Pull the back cover away from the phone and remove the battery. That's it. Step two is very ambiguous and you'll see what I mean in just a minute. Kind of crazy, but remember that. Step two. Yeah, pull it off. Okay. And last, of course, we've got the terms and conditions, return policy, limited warranty in multi-languages. Okay, you guys didn't want to see all that in that much detail. So let's get on to the phone. This is the phone. Now the first thing you're going to notice, there's the wildfire. Here's my G2. This, this is a ridiculously small phone. It's teeny. Looking at it on edge, you can see it's about half the thickness of the G2. About the same width, a little bit narrower. But the big thing there is just the overall length. Uh, just a huge amount of space has been eliminated from this device. Of course, the uh, the Wildfire S does not have a keyboard like the G2 does, but it's not supposed to. So what does it have? Let's take a look. Of course, you've got your nice, very reflective screen on front. You've got nice capacitive buttons on front, but there is an absence of a trackpad or a trackball. You'll notice that first and foremost. That means if you want to have fine precision control over your pointer, you're gonna to have to have a keyboard that has the arrows on the bottom of it. Uh, or just be really good with your fingers. Uh, I've got big fat fingers, so it's hard to get precision. That's why I like my trackball. I don't think that's gonna be a problem. Let's keep moving on here. So down at the bottom, you'll notice we've got our menus. It's in the same order as on the G2, which is very, very good. I hate it when devices switch around the menu items. You notice they've gone with the new kind of stylized uh, buttons. They're pretty much the same. Menu on mine says menu. This one is just the, uh, the three lines. In the past, it used to be a longer line with two little lines underneath it to infer that it was a menu. House now is a house without any eaves, whereas mine has eaves and a chimney. Isn't that quaint? So, moving back to the Wildfire S. We've got T-Mobile branding on the bottom, we've got HTC branding on the top, we've got our microphone, or excuse me, our speakers up here on the top. Moving around to the top of the device, we've got our multi-use headphone jack. A little notch there that assists in taking off the back of the phone. Remember I told you about that? Yeah, we'll get to that in just a second. And then our power button. Over on the side, we don't have a dedicated camera button at all over there. 
kind of interesting. Down on the bottom, we've got our speaker, or excuse me, our microphone holes. Over on this side, we've got a micro USB and our volume rocker, which feels really, really good, I might add. Now, while we're here, let me go ahead and plug in the micro USB just so you can see how that fits. It's a very nice fit, really snug when I get it in all the way. Uh, it feels really, really good. So uh, I'm, I'm quite impressed with it. Over on the back, we've got our camera. Now let's get into some details about the camera because everybody's interested about that. First, it does not have a front-facing camera, just a rear-facing camera. And that rear-facing camera is, it's really pretty good. Uh, it's a five megapixel camera. It's got a 3X digital zoom on it. And you guys know I don't really like digital zooms all that much. It does have the LED flash, autofocus. The camera app that it comes with has face detection and various shooting modes. You're familiar with the HTC camera, so we won't go into too much detail there. We've got our uh, rear speaker back there. On the back, very simple branding. HTC with HTC Sense. This is running Android 2.3.3, so not quite the latest version of the OS, but it uh, it's running Sense 2.1, so that's a little bit dated now. So kind of interesting there. Now I'm going to try and get into this back panel, see if I can do it. Remember step two that said, oh, just take the back off. Not as easy as you might think. You've really got to, it's tough. All right, guys, <laughs> take my word on that. So let me go off camera and get my little tool here and uh, we'll be right back. Alright, so once you've got this initial separation done, and I would recommend using a plastic uh, case tool to do that with, which, you know what, most people don't have. So if you're going to get this phone, make sure they do everything you need to at the store where they've got those tools. But once you've got that separated, just run your finger along the seam and it separates it nice and then you can easily lift the phone out. Now that's where things get interesting. You'll notice down here there's actually a recess that the phone fits down inside, just like that. This is the first phone that I've seen that's done something like that, and it's really, really a nice way to go. It holds the phone securely, and it also gives an option for uh, not only the manufacturer, but others to make third-party uh, accessories. For example, if you wanted to change this to blue, if there's somebody out there that makes a blue case wrap for it, you can just do that, pop it in, snap it in place, and now you've got a blue phone versus uh, the white one that you have now. Now I did mention that black is available through select distributors so if you want black instead of white you can do that stock uh, or hopefully hang out and see if there are some uh, replacement options out there for you. But very nice and it holds on very snug. It's a, uh, a metaphor that I like really well having that that little lip that sticks down in there. One other thing you'll notice in classic Android style it kind of has a little uplift to it so you've got the Android chin right there. Kind of cool. But let's get back to the phone. So down here we've got our battery. Let's go ahead and take that out and take a look at it. It's an HTC branded battery and if we look at this it's got a 1230 milliamp hour capacity. So not huge but for such a small device it should be just fine. Uh, plenty fine in fact. A little bit larger than most. The SIM card fits in this way to get it in and out. You simply slide up and that unlocks it. And then if I had better fingernails I, <laughs> I would be able to, to lift this out, there we go, just like that. And then the SIM slips out just like that. Put that back in and lock it back in place. Down here you've got your SD card. Now this is not a push to eject, this is just a pull. It comes with a Samsung 2 gig micro SD HC card, or a micro SD card rather. Uh, to get it back in you just push it in and you don't have to worry about it locking in place uh, because it just slides in place. Now, that is not accessible from outside the device, which most SD cards aren't anymore. So if you want to get at it, you're going to have to take the case off, and I would also recommend taking the battery out just because of the way we use our SD cards today as, uh, as app storage and whatnot. So that's the, uh, the device. It goes back together very, very easily. Put that back together, put that back together, and overall a very nice, very small phone that I like quite a bit. How small? 3.2 inch diagonal, so it's a really small screen. Um, 
but it fits really, really well in hand. It feels comfortable, it feels nice, uh, it, it fits perfectly with the contours. Right back here, you've got the rounded back. So I like it quite a bit. Now, this is just the hardware side of the review. Uh, because honestly, it went a little bit long in showing you all the details and trying to get that back panel off. Make sure you tune in for our software portion of the review. We're going to do some uh, some benchmarks and some tests. We're probably going to skip the first boot because it's HTC Sense uh, 2.1, which you've seen before. So very, very uh, common uh, common first boot sequence. Um, we may still end up doing that, but make sure you subscribe to our video channel if you haven't done so already so that you can uh, make sure you know when that comes out. If you haven't told your friends about this, giving the video a thumbs up is a good way to do that because it shares your uh, your likes and really your dislikes with uh, with your friends and the people that are following you on YouTube and various social networking sites. So make sure you do that as well. And of course, we're going to use this um, primarily as my daily driver for the next few days here, and we're going to do a thorough review on it here coming up very quickly. So make sure you have uh, got pocketnow.com on your bookmark so you can come back and see that full review as soon as it is out. Showing off the HTC Wildfire S for T-Mobile for pocketnow.com. I'm Joe Levi.